All right, so I'm going to do my best to talk a little bit about pride. I have a complicated relationship with it. Um, but the main thing that I will say is uh, um, growing up gay in the 80s, 70s, 80s, my primary self-talk and self-thought was deeply enmeshed in shame because it wasn't okay to be who I was. It, and when, as I figured out who I was, and as I figured out um, that it was different and that people didn't talk about it, um, and when they did, it was in these hushed, you know, oh, that person's a little, mm, we don't want to be like that. There were no real positive role models to see. Um, I mean, they were probably out there, but um, very hard to find. So I'm very thankful that Stonewall happened. Uh, I'm very thankful uh, because that started to put it into the public view and that started a conversation. That was a long time before it became a mainstream conversation that could be had. But shame and silence are exactly the opposite of what pride is. And so for me, when we talk about pride, it just means we can talk about it. And there can be, for people who are growing up and who are looking at this and are discovering that, that's, that being gay is a, or non-cisgender, whatever that means, um, is who they are, there are role models now. There are people that you can talk to. It, we're represented on television. We're represented in movies. And it's primarily positive. I mean, you've still got some whack jobs out there that try to make it look horrible. But um, So for me, that's, what it, that's why pride is important to me. We can have the conversations. We can talk. Um, we can normalize as much as, as that is a word. So... That's what it is. That's why it's important to me. Yeah. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. <coughs> <coughs>
speak.